Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the common threads between the real big healthcare problems out there. Uh, heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, autoimmune diseases. I've talked a lot about diabetes. We'll touch on that a little bit. Um, and there's other ones, but these are the, the main ones. So let's first talk about heart disease. What happens in the blood vessel of someone with heart disease is they start developing plaque, okay? And the plaque is uh, built up with cholesterol and the person has usually high LDL and that's called bad cholesterol, supposedly bad cholesterol. But in reality, LDL is low density lipoprotein, okay? It has cholesterol in it but this is a protein, okay? And there's this huge focus on cholesterol, but not any problem with protein. If we take a look at a, a plaque, it's composed of cholesterol, calcium, and proteins, okay? But people don't say to avoid protein, and they don't tell you to avoid calcium either, right? Even though calcium makes up this plaque, uh, they really target this thing called cholesterol. Now, the thing you need to know is before this piece of plaque develops, there's always um, something that starts it, okay? And it's usually some inflammatory situation going on. There's some type of damage in the wall of the artery in the heart, okay? And then it starts to build up. And one of the best tests to do for the heart is called a coronary artery calcium test. So the coronary artery calcium test is way more accurate in detecting heart disease than LDL or cholesterol or anything because they're looking at the calcification. So with heart disease, we have something that destroys the uh, wall of the artery. Usually it could be any number of things. It could be an infection from a microbe. It could be uh, free iron in the body. It could be some type of oxidant. It could be um, a lot of sugar, which is very, very common, like high blood sugar. And uh, anything that oxidates this uh, wall of the artery, that starts the process of inflammation and starts building up this plaque. Okay, then we get to something called Alzheimer's. In this situation, you have amyloid placking, okay? Amyloid placking is a type of protein, okay? So this is not coming from consuming too much protein or anything like that. Uh, this comes from first having damage to the brain, okay? It could be from an infection, it could be, again, from some oxidative thing that damages the, the brain. Uh, so it could be from a chemical. It could be from a whole bunch of things, okay? Then you get the inflammation. Then what you have happen is the replacement of the damaged piece of the brain for amyloid uh, protein. So the body is trying to heal or protect or trying to patch something up. It's the same thing with heart disease. This plaque, you know, is considered something really evil but it's just trying to help the body heal this original wound right here. Same thing with Alzheimer's. What's unique about Alzheimer's is that you have cells that just can't take up insulin. So they're very hypoglycemic and the, the cells need certain glucose or fuel like ketones. So if you actually starve off the, the brain cells of their fuel source, they start dying and you start getting Alzheimer's. Okay, so that's what's unique. And that's different with this thing right here, cancer because in cancer, you have first stage is damage to the mitochondria from some free radical thing or oxidant, like it could be free uh, iron, it could be radiation, it could be a chemical in the environment, a pesticide. There's all these things called carcinogens, right? So it creates damage within the mitochondria. Then as a way to salvage the mitochondria, which is energy factory, the body shifts to a different type of metabolism, okay? It's like an ancient pathway that we don't normally use, but the body then switches to this thing. At this level, I don't wanna give you the name of it and explain that because that opens up a whole dialogue, but just realize that the body's shifting to a different way that it metabolizes energy. It's gonna now run on pure sugar or glutamine, which is a very specific type of amino acid, okay? These are the two types of fuel. Now, the thing that's interesting with cancer is it spreads and follows areas of inflammation. So it actually gravitates to areas of old injury as well, or areas where you had trauma, which is another interesting thing. So cancer basically lives on sugar, and it can also live on this protein. But in Alzheimer's, there's just no sugar to live on anymore. The body can't receive it. So we have like a severe state of insulin resistance 
Um, they don't really know exactly what happens, but my guess is that the blood-brain barrier is so insulin resistant, the fuel can't get into the brain. Of course, another mode of fuel would be ketones, but they don't really tell you about that because then you can actually, the cells can take up ketones and they don't really need the uh, glucose. Then we have something called autoimmune, okay? Where the body is developing antibodies which are against itself. So you have a situation where our own immune system is attacking our own organs or glands. Now that's weird, isn't it? And it's the inflammation as a result from this immune war that creates the collateral damage. Like in rheumatoid arthritis, for example, or MS, you have your own body is destroying everything in its pathway. Now there's many different theories as to the cause of this, but it makes sense that the body is trying to kill something off that it doesn't need, like some microbe or something that shouldn't be there. And there's this misdirection and the body ends up attacking itself. Now, another interesting point about autoimmune is there's usually always an, a stress event that occurs right before a person develops these antibodies, which is interesting. The loss of a loved one, they have this trauma, and then they get this autoimmune disease, okay? It's just an interesting point. So I think what's happening, it's an overwhelming um, stress to this entire system, usually probably the adrenal glands, and then there's some loss of control there and the body um, tags the wrong thing. That's what I think that's happening. I don't know, it's, it's just my, my guess at that. But in autoimmune, you also have amyloid placking. Now there's a condition called amyloidosis in which this placking, okay, goes into different organs like the kidney, the liver, the heart, the pancreas cell, okay? And that's what actually can even um, cause diabetes as well. So again, a common thing is this protein. Protein is involved in autoimmune. There's protein involved in heart disease. There's protein plaque involved in Alzheimer's. Uh, so it's, it's another common thread. And you have, of course, inflammation. Inflammation is like the, the common theme between all of these conditions. All right, so I wanna give you some key things, six things that you can do uh, based on this data to kind of prevent these issues. Number one, you want to eat foods that give protective factors, okay? There are certain foods like cruciferous, for example, that can actually protect the mitochondria. There's foods high in vitamin B1 that protect the mitochondria, um, especially from diabetes and blood sugar issues. There are foods like vitamin C, there are antioxidants that protect the heart. Vitamin E, to protect this right here. There are foods that protect the brain. There are foods that protect the immune system, okay? So you wanna start eating foods, cruciferous, grass-fed, foods with healthy fats. Those are very, very important. Avocados, cod liver oil, for example, it's really good. Number two, you wanna keep your stress as low as possible. So if you're in a situation where it's just overwhelming, do something quick to minimize that. Don't be in a situation where the stress goes on and on and on for months and months and years and years. I see that all the time because that could potentially set you up for this right here. Number three, keep your sugars low. Why? Because the high levels of sugar is what starts this whole thing right here. And also cancer lives on sugar. Too much sugar can actually increase amyloid placking. All right, so we wanna keep the sugar very low. Do low carb, that's called healthy keto. Number four, keep your vitamins high. So you wanna eat foods that are very uh, vitamin rich, nutrient rich, mineral rich. Increase the quality of those nutrients. Very important in protecting the tissues. Number five, intermittent fasting. Why? Because intermittent fasting is the best tool to get rid of inflammation, okay? So you can at least take that piece of the puzzle out of the picture if you do IF. Very therapeutic. The body goes into an interesting um, shift in that it starts to heal and repair when you do intermittent fasting. It's fascinating. You would think that if you stop eating so frequently, it would go the reverse, but it doesn't. Number six, gut health. And this is the last thing I'm gonna talk about because you have way more microbes in and around your body than you have your actual cells. And it's the balance of these microbes that can either really help you or hurt you depending on what kind of balance that you have. 
And especially when you're dealing with the immune system, you want to make sure your gut health, you have enough probiotics, you have enough uh, fiber from the vegetables to feed the microbes to actually support a healthy uh, immune system. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.